Nine days after the ANSAS protests continue, what do the protesters really want? The Independent National Electoral Commission releases the timetable for 2023 general elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome, it's the Plus Politics. Another day, another opportunity to protest for the disbandment of the special anti-robbery squad SARS. On today's episode, protesters in Alausa, that's in Ikeja, the state capital of Lagos State, were attacked earlier in the day by thugs. It seems that now that SARS has been disbanded, the protesters are now asking for the cancellation of SWAT and bad governance in the country. Joining us to discuss this is Bernard Oniga, a political analyst. Good evening, Bernard. Good evening, Kayode. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Yeah, I am a public interest lawyer. Oh, I think we should look at it from that angle. And I also have in the studio our own senior correspondent, Amadine Uyi. Good to have you live here. All the way from Abuja. <laughs> Thank you, Coyote. Yeah, good to have you. Okay, let me start with Bernard. I, I want to know and I want to believe that uh, this, gener this seems to be your generation, my generation. Don't let me sound so old. <laughs> what exactly are we looking at? Is this a fulfillment of that insinuation that this protest might take another dimension? Okay, Kayode, if you must know, this is more than a protest. This is a revolution. This is an idea whose time has come. The lions and the tigers and the owners of Nigeria have refused to sit still and watch their motherland to be robbed, to be maimed, and to be raped by what I would call 1% of our population. And that is the people who occupy leadership part time from independence up until this time. So if you must know, Kayode, it is much more than an end SARS protest. It is a revolution whose time has come. It is about the fact that citizens are beginning to get interested in governance. Citizens are beginning to get interested in what happens in governance. Citizens are learning to call the government to account and to book. And so that is what you see on the streets. The anger, the agitation, the some somewhat misbehavior, you could see it's all as a result of all the years of, 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 of sufferings, of starvation, of lack and of poverty that the average Nigerian has been going through. Okay, this is long overdue. And so I would say to Nigeria and I would say to the revolution, welcome, welcome. I would say to the spirit of the revolution, welcome to Nigeria. We are ready to receive you and we'll be peaceful about okay. it and we'll bring change to our nation. Thank you, Bernard. Let me come to Amadine. Amadine, um, you know, in the newsroom, of the newsroom, we've had this conversation. And uh, to a large extent, for so many of us who have covered series of protests in the last 10, 15, 20 years, this appears to be quite unprecedented. One, because of the leaderless nature of the protests. Second, because of the sweet nature of response and the response we are getting from government is not even 40%, it's not even 50%, it's not even let's sit down and negotiate. It is about 100% response. But our worry is where are we headed in this revolution? First of or all, or in this protest, let me not use the word revolution that they used. First of all, when this protest started, some of us made it clear that this was beyond an end SARS protest. I saw several commentaries where people said, wow, the protesters, they want an end to SARS, that they are asking for the wrong thing. And I said, if you watch the nature of this protest, I've covered protests in the last 10 years, and you. It, then you would hardly see young Nigerians come out on their own accord to protest. 
In fact, most of the protests that go on in this country are either contracts, is contracted out by one interested party, hmm. they gather a group of people, pay them certain amounts of monies, and then, and so you have government, because government knows this. You hear the government of uh, that moment say they are miscreants. But look at this protest. You compare it to the Arab Spring that started in Tunisia in 2010 and subsequently spread to about five other countries, Egypt, Especially uh, in the North yes, Africa. Egypt Yemen, Libya. Libya, and so. Now, let's, let's look at similarities. The Arab Spring was championed by youths with digital technology, Facebook, Twitter, and whatever. As far back as 2010, we are seeing the same similarities. When this protest started, it started like a little fire. Right now, it has gotten to the level where we call it an inferno because it has spread to all, almost all the states of the country. As of today, young protesters went to the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, insisting, as still today in Plateau State, they barricaded the government house. Still today in several other states. So you see, young people, just like uh, the guest said, are now taking their destiny into their hands. Hmm. And it, it was not just something needed to catalyze this movement. It was the SAS brutality, their illegalities, and their impunity. So now, the young Nigerians are no more believing that it's just about SARS. They want holistic reforms. That's true. Not okay. just... Le, le, I, I'll come back to you. Uh, Bernard, I, I listened to a conversation, and that tells me that everything seems to be aligning. You know, for example, we were just yet to come out of COVID, um, where we people were restricted. And the bad part of it is that a lot of people lost their jobs. Not forgetting that we have millions of youths who have graduated having no job. So this comes handy for them. So is this a pointer to the government to look at series of issues beyond SARS? Because it appears government just felt what they see on the placards is what these people are asking for. You, you, you know, Kayode, I would say that um, it, is, it is high time that um, the government of the day realize the intricacies surrounding this protest. It is high time they come to terms with the reality of the fact that governance over time, and as, at, as, as it is in the present time, has not been in favor of the majority of Nigerians. We have not taken good, the benefits of governance in Nigeria. We have just 1% of our population, that is those in power, enjoying the largesse and the commonwealth of our nation. And so um, this is a message to the government of the day. I would say that they have to be very smart, they have to be very intelligent, and they have to be very diplomatic with the way they handle it. Because these young people, including myself, we are not afraid of the barrels of the gun as much as we would be very peaceful about this change we want to bring about. It is our nation. We have a right to call for change. And so I have also heard, I'm sorry to digress a bit, say I've had um, some um, insinuation that the military will be sent on the streets to, to quell. This is not the role of the, ministry, the, the military. The police should be allowed to do their job. But I would say that if the government of the day decides to go that route, which will be unfortunate, which I do not want to believe, that the advisors of Mr. President will let him go, it would not be good enough. But like I said, this protest and this revolution would be a 100% peaceful revolution. It will bring about change for you and me. And so this protest highlights the, the, the reforms, the many reforms, even in, the gov even in governance in our nation, in our political party structures, in the way elections are conducted, with the fact that in Nigeria you cannot assess finance easily. You have a brilliant idea, you have to go outside the country to bring finance in. 
the frustration are too many and multiple. Okay. And so the Nigerian people are just saying that we can no longer continue to live like fugitives in our homeland anymore. We want to take back our country. We want to take back the governance of our nation. And we want to turn it into a model for other nations because Nigeria okay, is the pride and the glory of the Af Africa as a whole. I let, would say this Bernard, let me stay with you before I come back to Amadine. Now there is another... Uh, angle to this protest that I must confess that I think I appreciate the aspect of, you know, uh, kicking out politicians from coming into the protest. As we speak, we understand that uh, the, the, the convener of um, revolution now, uh, the, the also a presidential candidate, was turned away from coming amidst them. So how do we ensure that this is sustained? Because trust me, if politicians come into the old picture, the protest might be, you know, colored. What do you think? Yes, this protest is for ordinary, everyday citizens like myself, who have never and might not have the opportunity to, to, to of leadership. And so we are, this is a feedback to those who have held leadership position over time. And I want to say this, I can observe that some politicians are beginning to sound very, very interested in the protest. They are beginning to, to, to sweet talk. I want to say to fellow Nigerian youth, we will not be deceived this time around. And I can assure you that it's a protest by ordinary Nigerians. I have heard that they said we do not have leadership. The protest, no, 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 no. We are led by the struggles, by the sufferings, and by the pains we have had to go through all the years whereby by virtue of giftings, by virtue of educational qualification, we are better than a lot of our age mates in other parts of the world. But we live way, 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 way below the, the, the abilities and the skills of our calling, you know. And so it is not business as usual. This protest is for ordinary Nigerians. I appreciate the intervention by politicians, but it is for and by ordinary Nigerians. Okay. And it is high time that those in power have their pen and their paper and have their advisors very, very close. And I will advise those in power to take very good advice from the right people because it will go a long way in bringing about a holistic change. It's, 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 it's the birth of a new Nigeria okay. that we are beginning to see here, uh -huh. Kayode. That is what is happening. Nigeria is rising. Young people in Nigeria are okay, rising. Noted, Bernard. I, I will be back to, uh, with you. Um, Amadine, I'm trying to look at... Um, how, what the goal is, and how we can actually achieve this. Because virtually anyone that comes forward to stand as an ambassador, or as a leader, is usually booed. You remember some of the celebrities, the Davido having a meeting with the IG, you know, when, when uh, DJ Copy made a statement, she was turned down. And I'm asking, how do we have a leaderless protest that will ensure that um, the points are well measured because it appears the points are well measured and they are, we are not able to see a face to it. Like I said, it started like a little fire. And at this point in time, it is like an inferno. It's, uh, if you come into its path, it will consume you. Hmm. But you say that the points are well measured and the points come out every day. Remember, it started with NSAS. From NSAS, it progressed to end police brutality. So you see that the youths who have been involved in this protest, it's like they, this is pent up anger that have been there for years. So they are using the opportunity to make all the demands they would have made in the last few years. Now, we have to also give it to the federal government. So far, so good. I think Mr. President has been making the right decision. Because remember that when the protest started, in several states, the police thought it was business as usual. usual. Roll out their armored personnel carriers, bring out and begin to release live bullets. But for every incident, the youths get bolder. You saw some of the videos that were trending. The IG had to make a decisive action and say, okay, we are scrapping SARS. We are going to listen to your demands as instructed by the president. 
we are going to, they will, at a point in time, we saw five-point demands. The, for the very first time, the federal government said, we are going to obey everything. But it did not end there. Because it was, like I said, the, pro, the, the protest has metamorphosed daily. It begins to bring in a new side to it. So you see the youths. Yes, just like you said, a, a former, uh, the leader of the revolution, uh, now protest. It was, you are trying to be very patronizing. I understand you are on air. He was not just turned away. He was chased away by the protesters. Because they say that they don't want any political coloration. And they have a right to protest. So mm -hmm. at this point in time, government, we must commend government for making the right decisions. But they must be very careful. Because a wrong decision will erode the gains of the last few the days. Right one. Remember hmm. that just today the FCT administration said that they have banned protests. But the youth still came out. Because it is so that not could be one of the wrong decisions. Yeah, it is a very wrong decision. Because how can you stop them? Are you bringing out the police with the guns again? It will be detrimental to the progress made so far. So at this point in time, it's just like telling someone, go and cast your vote, and telling him, wait to ensure your vote counts. What the youths are doing is, they are not only making demands. They say, yes, you are listening to our request, but we want to begin to see tangible efforts to address some of these grievances and make okay. positive and genuine changes. Quite, quite, quite analytical. Uh, uh, Bernard, I, I think you have something uh, to say about what uh, Madin just posited, looking at uh, some terms up for the government. However, I know there are bits of um, insincerity alleged by some people that I don't know where the, the counting started. Some said we've lost about 15. Which, which cannot be verified, but we at least we know one in Lagos and Surudere, and we've also seen a bit of brutality. Uh, what's your take about government's response generally? Yeah, I would say that so far so good. I would begin by also commending, not necessarily the president first, I would commend Governor Samuel Olu for his very um, orderly conduct in the way and manner he has handled this protest. At some point, he joined the protest. That is the diplomacy I am talking about. It does not in any way mean... Uh, I think, uh, I hope it wasn't the device, but you know, you just read something critical. We'll be back when the network is connected. Now, the, the diplomacy of the governor, and the governor even went as far as announcing the, I mean, listing out the names of uh, the victims and the, the, the beneficiaries to this, um, and another interesting part was that the protesters even said, that's not what we want. We want a change in style of government. We want an accountable uh, government. So how do we ensure, you know, Serap has come out with the latest, you know, suing the president or suing the government that 200 million naira must be paid for every life wasted. Now, that is Sarah's position. But you see, you talk about diplomacy, this kind of movement, I think the governor's hands are tied. Remember, yesterday, was it yesterday or day for yesterday, in River State, uh, Governor Yusuf Wiki came out uh, with the threats, nobody must protest in River State. <laughs> but when he saw the magnitude <laughs> of youth, he joined. So like I said, that it's gotten to the point of a movement that as a politician, the only thing you can do right now is to align because you are talking about over 45 million strong youths in the country. A lot of them are now realizing that we need to be part of governance. We need to be part of those that will determine our future. The days where we left it in the hands of string politicians are over. So that's why I said that the state governments those who are sending threats, they have no option. As of today, we are hearing that it's already picking up in some northern states. It's already picking up in some south, uh, southeastern states. We hear it has gotten to the south-south, rivers, delta. And so, like I said, what Nigeria needs to do now, 
those making decisions on behalf of the public is to do a post-mortem. Not just look at the police, look at how the country has been governed in the last 20 years and ask themselves questions. If in countries like Rwanda, we are hearing that they are, making, they are ministers in their 20s, ministers less than 20, then Nigeria that is expected to be a role model for Africa, a country that others should follow, is Nigeria that should take that lead. It's our birthright to be a leader in Africa. So like I said, all those sending threats, they know that their threats will not work. Because I remember the Arab Spring. When the, I remember when it got into Egypt. And the Egyptian government rolled out tanks and started brutalizing students, uh, protesters. That was what spurred students from the universities to come and join the protest. I remember one particular protester during one interview and they asked him, they are shooting you people. And he said, he said, if the government can kill all of us, we are willing to die. So mm. it's gotten to that point. So government is not, this is not the time for a blame game. The youths are making legitimate demands. Okay, Amadi, let me quickly give you the latest because of time. Uh, the, we understand this is coming from the presidency. It's almost, uh, it came up like um, less than 40 minutes ago. Uh, it said that um, National Executive Council to Governors take charge of SWAT. In other words, it's, 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 could this be another sort of way of um, state police, you know? Then another one is judicial panels of inquiry also formed to investigate police brutality mm. in all states and FCT. And finally, council also directs special victim fund in all states to compensate victims of brutality. Kai, I'm going to join the protest. Yes. No, no, not even join the. It's in the past, not just for this protest. And you know that I've been brutalized several times for, yeah, for going to cover protests. You, so, you need compensation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I also will be talking about compensation because we have some pictures. And, but let's leave that now. That was one of the key demands. You cannot, you, as a nation, you cannot decide to play the ostrich. Put your head in the sand and let the problem go away. Remember when we came, uh, 1999, after uh, we adopted democracy? That was one of the novel things the then president, Olu Shego Obasanjo, did. He set up an Oputa panel, and people came to air their grievances. Some came to heal. Some people just want to hear that I have wronged you. I am sorry. Now, that panel will bring up, will present Nigerians with that opportunity. Because I tell you that once those panels begin their hearing, you will be shocked at the level of impunity. And, you know, up to now, I still cannot fathom that protesters gather and say, give police welfare. And that same police points gun on them and begin to release live bullets. That tells you that the level of decay and impunity our security agencies, agencies had fallen into. But like I said, it's not a blame game. It's a movement that has started. Federal government, I think that they, they are making the right decisions at the federal level. Because Mr. President's body language has made many of the state governors to align themselves on the part of justice, fair play. So we have a situation now, the protesters are making demands and I think just as it started, nobody pushed for it. I think it would die a natural death. Thank you so much, uh, Madine. I'm still going to keep you here for the second topic. And I think the message is very, very clear and quite resounding. And we sincerely hope that uh, this kind of response, this kind of conversation should continue between the protesters and the people in power. Um, sorry, we are not able to reconnect with uh, Bernard Oniga who is a public interest lawyer. I think I like that description. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the date of the 2023 presidential election, it's up for discussions. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly.